In the previous video, we toured around Harvey Shear of Celtic Reptile and Amphibian, but of course the complete tour of the facility won't be complete until we've looked around Tom's side of things, and that is what we're going to be doing in today's video. Now if you would like to find out more about Celtic Reptile and Amphibian and the work that Harvey and Tom are doing towards conserving European species and their work in keeping them in outdoor enclosures, then I will throw down the link to their channel in the description box, but with that, let's get straight into the video. Right, so then Tom, so what have we got? Right, so here we've got a another greenhouse setup, but in this one we've got eye lizards, which are free roaming, and we've got the European tree frogs in there. Wow! So I can see the just point out to people that you've took the glass out the greenhouse, yeah. haven't you? Why is that? That's to allow the UV to come through, so it doesn't have to penetrate through the plastic, which does actually filter some of the UV out. Yeah. So obviously. The more UV that these animals get, especially the tree frogs and the eyed lizards, the better. The, the better the coloration that they'll have and the healthier that they'll be. Should we take a look inside? Yeah. You want to go in first? Sure thing. So they're just completely able to go in and out where they want? Yeah. And so I presume this raised area was this? So this originally, this was one enclosure and it had polycarbonate around the sides but as we worked with these animals more we understood that they want more area they want more space so what we did is we took away the walls and just allowed them to have the greenhouse all to themselves which of course is so much easier when you're outside with basically as much space as you've got on your property versus when you're indoors and you've already set up that fave and exactly yeah you just lot, sort of stuck. It's a lot harder to expand when you're indoors than outdoors. Now the the European eyed lizards they are if I'm not mistaken our extant largest lizard species in yes. Europe that we've got aren't they? Yeah so well they're the largest mainland lacerted so there is the Galotti stenheini, which is the Grand Canarian giant lizard. Yeah. And that is actually a little bit bigger than the eyed lizards, but they obviously just occupy Grand Canaria. Isn't there? There's an extinct species, isn't there? Yeah. Um, yeah. That was that was much larger still. Um, Gal from the Can Goliath. Something like that. Yeah. 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 So they they were huge. Yeah, absolutely massive. But unfortunately, they're not around anymore. And now we've just got the eyed lizards, which are still fairly big, and people yeah, uh, refer to them as mini tegus. If I'm... yeah. Now the, these plants, what sort of plants have you got in here? So this is we've got some lavender here. You know your basic lavender. Great, great plant for enclosures. They'll grow wide, very thick, lot, very thick vegetation. The insects absolutely love this plant. So under here you'll you'll see just. Uh, look, and Just, I can definitely smell it's lavender. Yeah, but yeah there's ants of and wood louse and everything. Springtails, yeah. all natural, so it's like natural bioactive, you could almost say. Yeah, exactly. And we've got slates here, obviously, for when it's cooler, the eye lizards love to go on the slates because they absorb the sunlight, the energy from the sun. And under here, sometimes we get ants' nests. Oh, yeah, I see them. Yeah. Will they actually take ants? Not much stuff will eat ants, will it? So, I've seen on occasion the idlers actually take the ants. Now, they won't readily go hunting for them. I've only seen it where the ants have actually crawl o crawled over the eye lizard. It kind of annoyed the eye lizard, so he yeah. just goes and eats it, just to get it yeah. out of the way. <laughs> but other than that, no, they don't really go for them. But yeah, then ants like in an indoor setup are often considered a bane yeah. bioactive setups because they just ants are absolute insect terminators. But yeah. out here, obviously, yet again, not a problem. No, in fact, we actually, if we see an ant nest out anywhere, we scoop it up, chuck it in here, and watch the magic happen. <laughs> Mainly, well, we actually put the ants' nests preferably in the tree frog enclosures because they do scoop them up, hoover them up. Nice raspberries for you in there. Yeah. Oh wow, and there's the frogs. 
Now, if you're not really familiar with European tree frogs, you might think it's a little bit funny that we've actually got tree frogs here in Europe. And now, until uh, a couple of years ago, I would never have thought that tree frogs actually lived in this country. But uh, is tree frog really an appropriate name for them? Sort of. Now, tree frog obviously uh, infers that it's a frog that loves to be in trees, but what we've actually found for these tree frogs is they love low-lying low bramble or shrubbery and that's exactly what we've incorporated into this enclosure. They love to sit on the bramble leaves or the raspberry leaves and just bask in the sun. And it's just like a per perfectly simple, perfectly natural environment and I suppose the only bit of maintenance you might have to do is like brush some of the faeces off the pipe and yeah, jobs are good is it? Sometimes we even just leave the feces like here, we've left it on because if that falls down and then into some ants or some beetles or whatever, they'll they'll love it's that. It's attracting the prey. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we've got another one here. I didn't even notice. And these they're sort of sort of inactive right now, aren't they? But yeah. later in the day, I presume they're gonna do this. Will they still be calling this time of year? Uh, so these are actually sub adults. Now these ah. are, these are last year's. Uh, captive bred stock, so 2019 captive bred, and uh, so next year these will be calling. But we do actually expect some because up here, I don't know if you're able to get it on. It's one on. almost vertical on that. Oh leaf. wow, yeah, I can see so that. So he's he's a big big one. So he might be calling by the end of this year. I bet that's uh, I, I bet that's something to listen to at night, is it? Oh, absolutely. You come in here and you you're deafened by the sound. <laughs> I mean. Some people don't like it, but we absolutely love it here. This, I think I can see another little one down here. Just yes. underneath that rock there. So, he's actually very dark and sometimes you have sort of morphs with the tree frogs. Kind of like hybrids, so you get different colorations, which is pretty cool really. Is that is that within the species or...? Yeah, so that's within Hyla arborea. The, uh, species European tree frog. Now, people do just, uh, they are this species just so often written off as nondescript plain green frogs, but you see them in, an, in a setting like this and they really do just, they're just. <laughs> Repti people who keep reptiles and amphibians should know what I mean, I think. Yeah, definitely. And these uh, tree frogs actually. With them being tree frogs, they are extremely good at climbing. So, if you have them in an enclosure with no roof on, they will get out 100%. Are they able to climb up the, the plastic? Yeah, they can stick right on the plastic, no problem. They hang vertical, they do all sorts. You know, if you're keeping them, you've got to really make sure. Take the proper precautions. Yes, yeah, definitely. We've had a few instances of escapes, but we've we've patched them up and. We got it sorted. Do you have anything else living in the water? No, so at the moment we don't, but we are planning on raising, we've got some baby green toes, which we'll show you in a, shortly, which will we will move into this pond when they're a bit bigger. And they will work in harmony with the tree frogs because tree frogs notoriously like to be high up in the bramble and toes love to be on the ground, rummaging for food and collecting any insects or mealworms or whatever that haven't been eaten by the tree frogs. So in here we've got the baby European green toads. So these were bred this year. Oh wow, there's loads of them, isn't there? Yeah, so we've got about 20 to 30 in here. Um, now the, these, aren't, these aren't the same coloration and pattern as the adults we saw earlier. No. Do they develop that colour as they yeah. get older? So within probably a month or two they'll start to get the white uh, coloration and the green markings on the backs and belly which is a indicator that they are uh, European green toads. There's actually a couple, I think there's, th there's three uh, yellow belly babies in here which you probably won't be able to tell because they are so similar to the green at, toads. At this size. Yeah. Now of course once again it, even though these are just babies, this is a, you know, people keeping them indoors, I bet, for adults, they're not even going to end up in an enclosure as nice as this, because 
The thing that's sad about uh, keeping indoors is that we're fighting a losing battle to replicate nature, like I say on my channel, following nature's example, because anything you do is trying to fulfill the evolved needs of the animal. You know, that can apply to species other than just reptiles and amphibians. But when it comes down to it, getting heating and lighting systems in is trying to replicate the sun. What we're feeding them, they do better on a varied diet as we know, and that is just replicating nature. And so, no matter what we do, and no matter how much we know, we're never going to fully understand all of the workings of nature, and therefore we are never going to be able to perfectly replicate the wild environment. So, as I say, keeping indoors is sad for the reason that we're never going to get there, but then it's also interesting because the more we realise that we don't know things about indoors, we understand why outdoor keeping is so good. And I suppose the more we come to understand these animals, the better chance that we actually have of conserving them. Because, you know, there's more to know. There's more people that are going to get interested in those different facts. And I suppose it's just a, a nice way of things complementing each other. But it does, of course, require as a prerequisite that indoor keepers are wanting to better their care and not just maintain what they are already doing. Right, so, so similar thing on. over here, have we? Yeah, so moving on, here we have some newly morphed pool frogs. Now you probably see one or two in the Oh in yeah, the the there we are. There. You can see these have more so than the common frogs, the eyes are sort of angled upwards, aren't they? Yeah, so these, these are the, the UK's rarest frog. And I can hear something. Now that is the yellow belly toads. Ah, now just actually, a little call. I don't know if you could pick that up on camera. It just caught my ear. Yeah, it's just very a, unusual actually, ex at least in my experience, for them to call at this time. But usually more night callers. So what? what's the full run up here then? So in here we have, at the moment, adult pool frogs and yellow belly toads. Sorry, I've just come across here. Sure thing. And we plan on adding some lizard species in, so maybe some wall lizards, common lizards perhaps. And once again, it is worth stressing with that, if you are going to attempt cohabiting, then large enclosures like this are more of a necessity, yeah. especially when it's mixing species, I would think. Absolutely. And as you can see here, you've got a decent sized pond here, and then you've got all this Which area. all the way around the back. Yeah, and you've got all this area for, that's for brumation. Yeah, little, little, of course we have a little, little froggy there. there. So the great thing about an enclosure like this is your frogs tend to stick to here and your lizards will tend to stick here. And this sort of cohabbing is just amazing because um, you don't get the competition with the lizards and the frogs for food because you feed your frogs, drop your mealworms or whatever over there. You want to feed your lizards, you put them over there. And that's just how you do it. Nice and easy. This enclosure is actually part of one of our videos on our channel. Uh, so this originally was a flower bed. So this was this was in here from before and a few other plants. That what looks like a, is that a um, what do you call it? Ribes? Yeah, something like that. Flowering currant, I think. Yeah. So we've adapted it. As you can see, there's concrete blocks at the back. At the back, that was already there. Bricks around, that was already there. We just put the wooden frame on with the polycarbonate all the way around. And this netting, you know, we're not actually fearful of these frogs getting out because they're no. not great climbers. But this is for prey, predators. Not prey, predators, sorry. Yeah. So we're birds, we have birds' nests, cats, we have lots of local cats, which is which is a nuisance, really. But it is, you have, you have I, learn, I feel that. Yeah, <laughs> but you have to learn to adapt when you're keeping outdoors. So what are we pulling out here? So this is a European pond turtle. Wow. Emmy's abiculoris. And um, again, a species that can be kept, well, if I don't fall into the water, completely outdoors in the UK. What a stunning animal. And I have uh, a feeling, what's the range on these? Whereabouts are they living? So the these are found all throughout France, Germany, um, into Eastern Europe, as far north as Belarus, Ukraine, Russia. And actually recently, uh, relatively recently, geologically, they were actually native to Britain 
and the northern countries. Um, and you can see not did, a did, massive turtle. Did they go turtle. into southern Spain? Southern Spain, yeah. Because I have a feeling I've, I might have seen these in yeah, the yeah, wild. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, and a species which, this, this sort of habitat, this riverbank um, sort of marshland habitat is, is how they live. This one's a male, and you can see it's a male because a of his very long, tail. very long tail. And they're awaiting a female. We're actually collecting a female this Sunday, so it should be Wonderful. exciting. So keep posted. Uh, we'll keep you posted on the on all the Facebook pages and Instagram pages and YouTube. But yeah, gorgeous species. Absolute stunning. And I think that's the most beautiful turtle I've ever seen. They are. They are honestly the the most gorgeous turtle ever. And you can see. So we keep them half water, half land. Um, and there are species which can live out here all year round, although in this situation we won't. We'll bring them inside for artificial brumation, yeah, um, because the water's not deep enough. Yeah. Um, but so, uh, so they'll hibernate underneath the water. They hibernate completely underneath the water, and what happens is they go into anoxic management. We've actually got a video on that um, where they absorb oxygen through their skin. Yeah, and like those like through the, the capillary nets exactly. Near yeah, the yeah. yeah. That was sort of a recent discovery. I've yeah, only yeah. heard about it with the North American turtles. I didn't realise. It, um, it most likely happened. I mean, these are in the the Emma day, so your your um, red-eared sliders and all the American species, yeah. you know, your sliders are in a, a, the same family group. As you can see, it's a wonderful sized turtle, not it massive is at incredible. all, and not too small, you know. So a great addition, you know. That to that is a true beauty. I'm not much of a Kelonian person, but I'm just I'm gonna put it out there. Look That's at that, nice look turtle. at that beautiful eye as well. Gorgeous. You can tell it's a male as well, because of the, the concave. Oh yeah. The concavity there. Yeah. Wonderful Stunning. species. A friend said they look almost as if they've been dusted with gold, and I think that's a great way of describing how beautiful they are. Yeah, and I would not argue. Gorgeous. Off we go then. Not as fast as anticipated. <laughs> wow, you can really see how he blends in yeah, there. Yeah, you can. What a gorgeous little turtle. Terrapin, whatever you want to call it. Right, so thanks for having us around, Tom. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, thank you. Thanks for all the info, no Harvey. No worries, no worries at all. So I hope that you have uh, enjoyed this uh, bit of a collaboration with uh, Harvey and Tom of Celtic Reptile and Amphibian. And if you do want to check out their channel, then I'll throw a link down in the description. And I might do one of those iCard thingies if I can remember to do it. Uh, but for now, these have been Celtic Reptile and Amphibian. Yeah. I've been JTB Reptile, teaching you how to follow nature's example. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye, Thank guys. You. Bye. Bye.